Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, if you like what we do, if you like uh, the content, appreciate uh, the daily grind of technical analysis and not guessing and not hoping and not praying, all that good stuff. Uh, all I ask is share out the screen. Uh, share the screen. Long day. Share share the channel, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. But again, uh, support the channel. You know, hopefully, I'll continue to do my best to guide you uh, on a day to day basis through my uh, personal experience. Uh, so yesterday, uh, obviously, a lot of technical damage, um, brutal, right? Brutal technical damage. You had a thirty three point six percent decline yesterday in the Nasdaq one hundred. Uh, the question is, what we were going to have if we were going to have a day two. Um, last night, after I stopped recording, or was actually in the middle of my recording, I didn't see it. Obviously, I would have talked about it. There was a DOJ headline. They're investigating. They were investigating uh, Nvidia, and last night, everything you know, everything started spiraling down uh, as well. So, when you woke up this morning. A lot of names were already read, uh, getting beaten up. But to the bulls' credit today. They didn't completely, you know, just die, right? They could have easily died and we could have closed at the lows, but they actually put up a fight. They lost yesterday's lows. They reclaimed yesterday's lows and they started to go green and they were up like 30, 35 handles and they went red on the day. And basically what that means is it was a very, very weak attempt of a dead cat bounce. It was a dead cat bounce on the table, of course. It's always on the table. Uh, but it really did show you today that there was absolutely no life, zero life uh, in the bulls and a lot of names that we talked about last night, right? The apples of the world. Uh, NVIDIA had a second day uh, move down today. Um, you know, it worked out pretty well, right? It worked out pretty well today. We'll get to the pivots in a second. But the key question going forward is, again, what happens next, right? Um, the longer we build, and this is a very, very important point, the longer we build and we stay below this 100-day SMA now, okay, which is now uh, acting as a ceiling instead of acting as a floor, well, the higher probability we'll get down to this 453 level. So the bulls really need to get back uh, at least above the 461 level on a close to kind of reclaim back uh, all of the supplies that was uh, demand at one point. It's a very, very important level. The bears obviously can need to continue uh, to build in the ceiling. And the longer we stay, we go sideways, stay sideways, continue to put in uh, lower highs, lower lows. We will continue to drift and go all the way back down uh, to this 453 level. And again, if you see a lot of names, the way they act, you kind of you, you kind of see what I'm saying. I mean, you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to, you know, go through every single chart with a fine tooth comb. It's kind of pretty obvious uh, what the market is doing now. Uh, the key metric here is now that we are below supply and we have technical damages, well, again, how are the bulls going to get above supply? What's going to get it uh, above there? You have the job Jones number today, you know, looked okay for a bit. They rallied and then they sold it off. But the, the key is the leaders. The longer the leaders are below supply, the higher probability well, we are going to get pulled. And again, the, the, the biggest, one of the biggest bullish seasons is the fourth quarter, right? You start going uh, with the Thanksgiving holiday, then it goes to the Santa Claus rally. And if it spills over to the January effect uh, for the new year, that's usually a bullish thing, but it doesn't have to happen. It didn't happen in 2022. It didn't happen in 2000. Uh, in, well, excuse me, it did happen in 2023, but it did not happen in 2022. So the question is, if we continue to build below the supply, well, is Santa Claus, is Christmas going to be canceled? Again, it's a little bit too early uh, to say, but the one thing that people should not be running with this narrative, and you hear this all the time, the market is crashing. You know, the last days, the market's crashing. Guys, the market is up. The NASDAQ is up over 22% year over year. I don't know what market you're looking at, that the market is crashing, but it's absolutely ridiculous to run that narrative. And it's actually, honestly, very irresponsible. 
The NASDAQ 100, the Qs, are still up about 11, 12% for the year. I, I don't know where this market is crashing. What's happening here, okay, is a violent indecision market. And you can see here by the price action, reclaiming the 50, losing the 50, back and forth, back and forth. We obviously have an election, but to sit there on social media, unfortunately, again, the majority of your interaction on a day-to-day -day basis is with people on social media. To hear that the market is crashing is asinine. It doesn't make any sense. I trade both, both sides of the market, and I would never say the market's crashing, okay? Taking advantage of levels to the downside doesn't mean the market's going to zero. The economy's not crashing. Your position's not going to go to zero, whether you're long or short or indifferent. So the last thing you want to do is create, a, you know, create a, um, create an image that you're trying to be so exaggerated just to just to get likes, clicks, and farm for impressions that you'll say anything just to draw attention. Folks, the market's not crashing. Okay, when markets not crashing, just look at the data. It's very aggressive right now to the sell side. <clears throat> The sell interval is very, very massive right now. You can see it by the price action, but put yourself into perspective. Look at the weekly chart on the Qs, and you tell me if this market's crashing, right? Well, you got to do it. If you have eyes, you can see that the market's not crashing. Hell, we're nowhere near. Uh, we're nowhere near uh, the lows that were four. Uh, what was it? Four twenty-three. We're still forty points above. Right, forty points above the lows. Again, how can the market crash if we're forty points above the lows? It makes it makes absolutely no sense. So again. Some of you guys have really, really big following on social media, and some of you guys, uh, you know, look up to a lot of so social media celebrities. But guys, don't run with this stupid narrative. Okay, you, you, it's very okay, and it's your right to trade both sides of the market. When I'm short, yes, I want to see the stock go down as much as possible. But be practical of what you're saying. It, there is a level of professionalism that you have to apply because people are going to look up to you. Some people are going to run with a false narrative, but be professional. Like Barry Sanders did in his prime, you know, when you score, give the ball to the referee. You don't need to do the icky shuffle. You don't need to do the spike the ball. You don't need to run around. I'm the best. I'm the best. Just be a trader, right? Be a professional trader. Whether you're trading uh, E-minis, you're trading uh, stocks, options, whatever that crap else you decide to trade on your plate, be a professional, act like a professional, we'll win, lose, or draw. Be an adult, okay? Uh, again, it's very, very obvious uh, when somebody turns around and says the market is crashing, okay? Tell me you're an amateur without telling me you're an, you're an amateur, right? So guys, just be careful. There is a level of professionalism. There's a basic level of common sense. Uh, again, don't be that dumb dumb in the corner that everybody's looking at uh, for stupid things that are coming out of your mouth. Other than that, uh, market, again, weak. Uh, there are a lot of weak names going into tomorrow, but I want to talk about the one name that is not weak, okay? Uh, let, let's talk about the pivots first, and then we'll get to that, what I'm talking about. So again, another day uh, of selling. Uh, here we had Microsoft. We talked about this last night. Uh, 407 uh, daily held twice. The bills below can flush. Also took out the 406.30 level. Traded down to uh, 404. Uh, Apple was great. We talked about Apple yesterday losing the 50-day moving average. 2117 and 202075 if builds below will lose the 50-day moving average. Beautiful move on Apple. Really, really great move on Apple today. Um, beautiful move on Apple today, right? It lost the 50-day moving average off this 21, traded all the way down to 17. Gorgeous move. Congratulations, all you guys who caught it. Uh, Google, this is the lowest close of the whole formation. Uh, 156.40, if it builds below, we'll confirm the 200-day moving average. Guys, that's where it closed. Watch Google tomorrow. Okay, watch, watch Google tomorrow. You know, look at this thing. This is the first close below the 200-day moving average. If it confirms this channel, this thing's going to get blooded. Like, it's going to be, there's going to be a bloodbath here. Again, if it, you know, if it confirms. Again, who the hell knows if it doesn't, if the concern confirms or not. Uh, NVIDIA, I caught this thing right off the open. Again, the second day push. Uh, if it opens above 107.29, uh, use that as a natural pivot. If not, below the 105.69 pre-market lows. Nice move. The 105.69 uh, traded down to 104 and then it you know, snapped back, came back in and all that stuff. But again, nice uh, nice wash there at the open. Uh, Tesla didn't get down there. We'll get the Tesla in a second. Uh, AMD never got down to the 136 level. But here's kind of where things went pretty good, right? So Tesla, right? Tesla yesterday, if you guys remember Tesla yesterday, Tesla spiked up about $11, right? Despite all that crazy nonsense that was going on, Tesla spiked yesterday about, no, not $11, about $8, and then it sold off the rest of the day. Today, it spiked up again, about $9, $10 at the open. They were coming for 
pretty aggressive. Uh, they were coming today with, with pretty aggressive uh, 225, 230, and 240 weeklies. Very, very aggressive, guys. This is what the market was selling out the open. So there was a candle here, and I said, look, 220 needs to build for a potential move to the 50-day moving average of 222. So there was a nice pivot, right? Nice little pivot on Tesla from 220, and look where it stopped, right? Stopped right at 222. The reason why it's so important is, well, why the hell is the stock spiking two days in a row, seven, eight, nine dollars at the open? And this is now the highest close in the whole formation, still underneath the 50-day moving average. But with all that call buying, I'm thinking to myself, and I was just talking to a couple of guys in the webinar, and I said, well, why can't we get a third day, right? Is it possible for us to get a third day uh, spike seven, eight dollars at the open? Again, if they spiked it yesterday and they spiked it today, well, why can't we get day three? The more, and more important part of a potential day three spike above today's channel is not only is it going to confirm today's channel is, but guys, it would get back above the 50-day moving average. The last time a Tesla got back above the 50-day moving average, you know, went from, what is it? Went from two, what was it? 212, 212 to 228 in four days. So guys, this is a big area tomorrow, folks. You see how it got rejected here? If Tesla could get back above the 50-day moving average, who knows? Maybe we could get a move uh, to 227, 228. That's how it's been kind of trading for the last couple of days. It's been very, very odd. I have really haven't seen uh, too much news. I, I know, again, you could t you could make a case, well, they're trying to spike it uh, into uh, the October um, robo-taxi event. I don't believe that. I, I don't think these seven $8 moves have anything to do with that. Uh, honestly, it really doesn't make a difference. But I tell you, this is definitely my top watch for tomorrow. Okay, definitely my top watch tomorrow. It got rejected twice in the same area. It got rejected off the 50-day moving average. Uh, and again, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know a stock gets back above the 50-day moving average. That's a major, major green light. So uh, Tesla, uh, definitely my top watch for tomorrow. If it could reclaim today's supply, I think there's a potential for a day three uh, move like we've seen uh, at the open. We'll see. We'll see. Other than that, uh, let me give you guys some uh, some ideas for tomorrow. Uh, my daughter's team won yesterday, so they are on this in the semifinals today. So I gotta I gotta run today. I gotta run. Um, I have to run. Um, I have to run in a bit here. But let me give you guys uh, some ideas for the for the uh, for tomorrow. Google again. I'm watching below uh, today's channel. If Google starts building below today's channel, I think this thing has a chance to get hit. Uh, look at CrowdStrike, right? CrowdStrike lost uh, lost a week's range, stopped at the 20-day support. If this 20-day support gets lost tomorrow, I think there's more downside movements there. That looks good. Uh, look at ZS had a bad day. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the best way of saying it. Guys, look how many times ZS, this is going back to May. Look how many times ZS has held this bottom channel here. This is going back to May, Okay. If ZS loses this bottom channel after 36 point decline today, there could be a really, really significant aggressive second day of selling. So definitely, definitely watch uh, ZS for uh, tomorrow. Uh, letter U, a little bit of a slower name than the others. Uh, close today below the 20 day moving average. Watch this thing if it starts confirming uh, today's prices tomorrow. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, let's see. Look, I, I, I still think there is going to be uh, uh, a potential measured move to this 100, 101 area in the next couple of days. Again, is it possible it rallies tomorrow? It had a chance at rally today. It had a chance to do it again uh, three times today. It got red to green, red to green, red to green. They finally sold it. But is it possible they rally it tomorrow? Everything's possible. But if it continues to take out previous day's channels, I do think eventually we'll get to this uh, 101, uh, 100 level. But the key metric for me to watch is Tesla. Again, there's no guarantee that Tesla tomorrow will uh, confirm today's channel. But if it does, folks, the 50-day moving average is kind of a big deal. Guys, God bless everybody. I got to run. Hope everybody is doing well. And God's help, I will see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great night.